Hey everybody, Awesome at G here, and today we're going to be doing a Afterthoughts video for Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. So, this is going to be a relatively shorter, uh, at least commentary length video, uh, compared to some of my other Afterthoughts videos, primarily because the game just was shorter than most of the other games. There's less to go over, uh, in addition to the fact there are less good things to talk about. I hate to be... A real. This is going to be a kind of a negative video <laughs> about the game, for the most part. I'm going to point out a lot of good things the game had going for it, but uh, it's well outweighed by a lot of negatives. Um, so let's start with some of the positive things. I was, I was glad we finally had a primary uh, assassin that was female. That's awesome. Um, I'm glad we had a primary assassin that was. See, I want to say non-white, um, but then I think to myself, well, Connor was half uh, Native American, but I mean, Aveline was half white, so uh, it, it to me, I'm still kind of waiting on a full ethnic, um, like, non-stereotypical white assassin character. Obviously, there may be one from one of the other games I haven't played yet. Um, I know there's a DLC for Assassin's Creed 4 uh, Black Flag where, like, the main character is a relatively white assassin, but there's a DLC where you play as a, uh, like, I, I don't know what he is. I know he's a black assassin. Uh, I don't know if he's, like, a freed slave or what his story is, obviously, because I haven't looked into it, but I know there's a sh a, at least a short period of time where you can play as a, uh, a, a black guy, a black assassin. Um, and I'm looking forward to that as well, because you, you kind of get... There's certain aspects of, of life that, you know, your average white guy doesn't experience. Um, so, so getting to see stuff from that point of view is very interesting for me. Um, the combat was well done, for the most part. There were a couple of parts that were a little quirky, but that was more on, you know, the level design being a little awkward, or the climbing mechanic not working perfectly in certain areas, which is, I mean, which is fine. You wouldn't necessarily expect a game with this much free-running parkouring to be 100% perfect in the free-running portion of it. You're going to get stuck in certain spots, but um, that's not the combat's fault. The combat's fault. That's, uh, you know, something else. The combat seems pretty good once you got the hang of it and, and I figured out how to do stuff. Like, towards the end of the game, you started seeing that I was able to take on groups of, like, you know, 6, 8, 10, 12 guards and not have that big of an issue with it. You know, start learning that even though I'm in the middle of the combo, if I see the little red triangle come up over another enemy's head that says they're going to start attacking me, I could just go ahead and press the counter button in the middle of the combo. Originally, earlier in the game, I thought I had to wait until the combo was done before I could counter anything else, and I thought it was kind of unfair that, you know, people could jump in in the middle, and I was like, well, no, I can counter them, or I can cancel my combo in the middle and block them. The, the one thing that was a little, it was, is, it wasn't really annoying, it was just the fact that you have to learn and then remember the care, the, uh, the, the guard types that require certain ways to, uh, break their guard, like you've got the standard guards, which you don't, you just, just a counter kill, you just hit E and then you attack again and you hit him in the face or whatever. But then you've got the heavy guards where you have to break their guard using space bar or whatever the button is on the, uh, the Vita or the PS3-4 or whatever this game came on. Um, I know it was a handheld game, but I, I didn't know if they ported it also to PS3 or PS4, so that's why I threw that in there. Um, you've got the ones that you have to throw, you've got another one? I forget what it is. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so you've got all those different kinds, and it's not really a negative side, it's just like I wasn't good at remembering what type of uh, counterattack to use on what kind of uh, guard type. Um, a couple other things that were really good. I liked, I liked the free running. They seemed to do a little bit of a better job on the free running versus um, parts of Assassin's Creed 3. Um, like, the trees were more well interconnected in the bayou. Um, so that was a little easier to move from tree to tree in the bayou than it was in certain parts of AC3. 
Uh, a lot of the game seemed confusing. Here comes the negative stuff. Just throwing that in there. Spoiler! A lot of the game seemed very confusing. The, they introduced characters and basically just assumed you knew who the hell they were from from point one, like Gerard, Gerald. Um, they don't really give him any kind of backstory. They're just kind of like, hey, here's Gerald. He runs the business side of everything. Go. And you're just like, who the fuck is this guy? Is he good? Is he evil? I don't know. Give me some kind of inkling here. Um, there were also certain characters in the game that are killed off in an attempt to elicit an emotional response from the player. Um, and if this and anybody that's watching this is going to assume there are going to be spoilers in here, and just in case you didn't, spoiler alert, stop the video now, giving you plenty of time to pause the video. Okay, anyway, so you kill off, like, your dad dies, and you, uh, Agate dies, and those two characters, other than your dad being your dad, I had no other real emotional attachment to that character. I didn't. There, there wasn't a whole lot of story build up for that. They're like, hey, this is your dad. Um, he likes you because he's your dad. Obviously, most dads like their kids. And then later in the game, he dies. And you're just like, oh, my dad died. You know, that, that didn't elicit a, a very powerful emotional response. Same thing with Agate. You spend the majority of the game just arguing with the guy. Like, what? How is this guy's death supposed to elicit an emotional response from me as the player when earlier in the game I'm like, hey, I like this Agate guy, and then Agate is like, hey, I want you to go do this thing, and you're like, no, nah, that's a really bad idea, and Agate's like, fuck you then. It's like, you're an asshole, get out of here, I don't have anything to do with you, and you're like, whoa, dude, what the hell? You know, earlier in the game you were all like, hey, you don't need to go kill everybody. And then, like, five minutes later, you're like, you need to go kill this dude. And I'm like, I really don't think I needed to. I got the information I needed. He's all like, fuck this, you're out. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. And you're just like, wow. You know? But yeah. Do you have problems with something here? Because you're acting really strange. And, uh, so, I mean, that... None of this elicited an emotional response for me. The game just seemed half-assed in, in the story. They didn't give you a lot of build up with stuff like even the side quests that were like hey go say go figure out what's going on with this uh, slave that got assassinated or the one called the plot where you had to figure out why people were kidnapping you or had kidnapped you and you're like none of this none of these side quests connect to the main story at all other than the fact that you're freeing slaves in the main story, and this is about freeing slaves. That's That was basically the only connection that the developers made there. And it seemed very half-assed. I was... Uh, easily, in the ranking of Assassin's Creed games I've played so far, which is 1, 2, Brotherhood, Revelations, um, 3, and then Liberation. This easily worst game. No, No questions asked. I had problems with Revelations and 3, and this one easily is below them. Like, no problem. I would go back and play Revelations and 3 in a heartbeat compared to this game. I will probably go back and play this game too. Because it's an Assassin's Creed game, I like it. I mean, the game's... The gameplay itself is fun, but I don't play the games just for gameplay. I want story, and I want... I want to connect to characters, and I want to... I want to get emotionally involved, and this game just didn't get you emotionally involved at all. The most, the person I liked, I got emotionally involved to the most was Gerard, Gerald, whatever. Him, because he likes Aveline, and they just totally glossed over that side of the story. They're like, oh, he like he likes Aveline, and Aveline says, hey, we can't have an emotional connection here, and he's all like, oh, that sucks. The end. That was the that was the extent. And then later on, when you go to that little ball that your mom gets mad, your stepmother gets mad about. Um, when you go to that ball, he's all like, hey, I could go as your, like, your, your and one, or your plus one, and she's all like, oh, that would be awesome, maybe, let's not make it too much about business, wink, wink, and that was it, nothing else ever touched on that, I'm like, 
that's something I wanted to hear about. I wanted to hear about some connection there. That would have been entertaining. And they was—they just... That was it. Let's find something that's really interesting and, and could easily be built upon and, and create some emotional connection between the player and a character, and then we'll just not do it at all. And then we'll, then we'll try to force all these emotional connections to characters you could care less about because we don't touch on them at all. Or we make them look like assholes and then expect you to be emotionally attached when that character dies off. It's like... It all seemed really cheap and ham-fisted and just kind of... It, it was all shoved in there. It was, it was very poorly done. They, they had very little story, very little backstory, very little character development. It was a disappointment. And it... There was no... The other thing is, and I realize this is a a game that in the aspect of quote-unquote outside the Animus gameplay here, this is not a outside the Animus game, you know? Because I, I realized that the game was put together by... Uh, by Abstergo Industries and not uh, the Assassin Group. Uh, so I, I, I realized that part of it, there's a little disconnection there, but it, fe it felt very much like mission one, go, end of mission, mission two, go, end of mission, mission three, go, and it's just like there was, there was little connection between one mission and another from time to time. I mean, it was like, hey, um, I realized that this happened and now we need to go do something else, but there's like, there's no communication to the player about this, or there's no explanation about why you need to do certain things. It's just like, hey, we figured out that this stuff works. Go over here, do this thing. And you're just like the whole, the whole building your ship crew. I never used my ship. Why am I collecting a crew for a ship that I never used? Why am I worried about upgrading the cannons on my ship? There's no mission that involves the ship. What the frick was all that about? It's a complete waste of time and resources. And on a side note for that, what the hell was up with those credits, man? Those credits went on forever for a game that was developed for the Vita and included people that you know the, the extent of their involvement in this game was knowing that it was being made and telling somebody, hey, you need to work on it. And I'm like, what? Why are there like 5,000, 6,000 people involved in the making of this game that could have been made by 300 people? Could have been made by less than that, but there's like, there's like all these people involved in this game and the game just came out to be crap. I'm sorry, it just did. It was a poor... Poor excuse for an Assassin's Creed game, in my opinion. It's way too much. Side note. I keep saying side note. These aren't side notes. Whatever. You get the idea. A lot of the animations were really well, were really uh, crappily done. Like in the scene, I don't know if you want to go back and watch it, but the scene where Aveline's there and her dad is sick in bed. You, you don't notice this, but her pinky becomes like a foot long. Because she's like curling her hand, and rather than make like this little, like if you curl your pinky up in your hand, it makes like this little teeny tiny little circle square thing out of your pinky if you curl it all the way, like as far as you can. But she, she does this, and her pinky like reached back to her wrist in like a natural long curve. Her pinky came all the way back to her wrist. It looked creepy as hell. Um, and in addition, like her hands, she was. She was supposed to be holding his hand at the one scene, and then when she laid him back down, she was supposed to, like, hold his head as she gave him a little peck on the forehead. And she was, like, a good six to eight inches away from where she need her animation needed to be for that. And I don't know whether that was a problem with Aveline's animation or a problem with her dad's animation, but it's poor animation, regardless. Um, the voice acting was also surprisingly subpar. The main characters were pretty well done. And I got corrected in one of my videos where somebody, I, I thought somebody was supposed to say, we, oui, and they said like, oh, uh, which is apparently is like a, uh, I probably butchered it, but apparently it's like a slang version of saying like, yeah, instead of yes. And I didn't know that. It's a Cajun pronunciation instead of like a formal French pronunciation. And of course, that's just me not knowing the language, and that's fine. But like, 
all of the civilians or passers-by in the street, their voice acting was horrible. The, the volume of their voices was way too loud. The, the voice acting sounded like they just got some dude off the street and said, Hey, by the way, I need you to record something. Yeah, could you record? Ah. Uh, and then the person came in and was like, Ah. Uh, and they're like, Perfect. Got it. We're going to put that in the game. No problem. And then they're like, Whoa. And then you're just like, Why are these... You would walk by somebody and they would like take a half step back and the person would go, ah, or the person would go, oh my god, I'm dying. And you're just like, this is not accurate voice acting here. Y'all needed either better vo first you needed better voice actors for those characters. You could have just, you know, done a better job with that. But secondly, there needed to be options on what the reaction of the the passerby was. Did the passerby get knocked down? Then they need to have a louder reaction. Did the passerby just get pushed over? They need a medium volume reaction. Did they just take a half step backwards? They need to go like, uh. You know, they don't need to go, uh. It's, it was, whoever was in charge of that portion of the voice acting, the voice direction, that person did a horrible job. I don't, they, they did not deserve to get paid for the work that they did on that portion. I'm sorry. I'm, this is coming from a company called Ubisoft. Come on, y'all are a triple A uh, game developer and publisher. This crap is, is inexcusable for the amount of money you pump into your games. This is ridiculous. Uh, and I don't think that's ridiculous of me to expect that. You know, if, if this had been made by a crew of like 10 people and they had that problem, I would be all like, you know what, it's not that, it's, it's bad voice acting, but I'm not all that dis disappointed. It's a, a group of 10 guys that got together and wanted to make a game, and other than that, the rest of the game was fine for a group of 10 people, but this isn't a game made by a group of 10 people. This is a game, according to the credits, had like a thousand people working on it. That many people should have been able to catch these problems. And all these game testers should have heard all this voice acting and gone, Hey, this voice acting is shit. And they should have reported that as a problem, because it is a problem. It takes you out of the game. Anyway. That, that was a little bit more of a rant on that topic than I wanted it to be. But yeah, there were some major issues in the game. The, the main ones, I mean, voice acting was lackluster in certain areas. Um... Lack of char lack of player involvement in characters, like I just didn't care about certain characters in the game, and the game wanted me to, and I didn't. Uh, the story was very confusing. They didn't give enough backstory or information along the way to understand what the hell's going on. Um, the way they connected one mission to another, there was no explanation sometimes. So it was just like, what the fuck is going on? Why do I need to go to the bayou now? I don't know. The game just said, go to the bayou, and then you wound up in the bayou, and it's like, assassinate this guy you've never heard of. And you're like, okay. And, um, it was just a bunch of stuff that just seemed, like, half-assed. And I get that it was a Vita game, originally, or a... Yeah, it was a Vita game. I was gonna say PSP, but no. And I understand that it was a Vita game, and you can't have as much in a Vita game as you can in a PS3 or a PS4 game. I completely understand that. But... If that's the case, they should have removed other portions from the game to flesh out the main portion of the game so it didn't suck so much balls. You know, let's let's have let's completely eliminate the ship. Eliminate the missions where you get more crew members for your ship, or you get new blueprints for that one cannon that could be used on your ship, and you get rid of um I forget the guy's name, but the captain that you end up um convincing to captain your ship I'm like all of that's useless just get rid of all of that that's completely unnecessary and I realize there's also the whole thing of well maybe that ship is part of your trading company well then why can you lose the ship if you lose the ship with all hands what's the use of any of the other stuff I mean yeah they're all like yeah you can get this cannon it'll help with pirate attacks it's just going to change the percentage of your attack they could have just made a ship store, and you could have just walked over to the store and bought. I want to buy a new cannon. Let's buy some hull, like they did in Assassin's Creed 3. They made a store for all of that. Let's make it a money thing. 
That would have been fine. They could have eliminated all the stuff for that. And then taken all the time, money, and space on the, the, the game disc, I guess. I don't know how the Vita does it. To, to fill in some of the gaps elsewhere. Even if they did it with more reading. I didn't so mind the reading in the um, animus, quote-unquote, between sequences. Where you would go from sequence 7 to sequence 8. And it would give you the little blurb off to the side that would have more text about what happened between 7 and 8. And I'm fine with that. I would have been totally fine with additional reading. Uh, and I realize most other people, like your average gamer, quote unquote, is not going to want to read a whole lot, and that's fine. But, you know, at least put it in there. Make it so that some people understand what's going on. The people that will actually read. Because the people that don't want to read are not the people that are interested in the story anyway. So what does it matter? You just put the text on there, put on there, like, uh, two seconds after the text appears, X to skip. And then you could just click. If you don't, if you don't care about reading, you just want to get in there and stab some fools. That's fine. But for the, those who love the story, give them the text. Connect things better because it was poorly done. Anyway, sorry for how negative this review was. This afterthoughts. I was just like, I was really disappointed in the game. A lot of the story didn't make any sense. I don't know what to tell you. Would I go back and play this game again? Probably yes, but only because it's an Assassin's Creed game, and I would I wouldn't play it for the story. I would play it for, you know, completionist. That's the only reason I would play it is because it wouldn't be that hard to go and do all of the quests of like collecting the treasure, or running around as the lady persona and finding all those dudes with the jewels and trying to charm it off of them. That's fine too. I would do that. Maybe there's little Ubisoft. Fucking what is there? You play thing? Stupid. Get all of get all of the simple achievements in there. I can get. Uh, Y'all know me. I'm not a hundred percentist person anyway. But you know, collecting treasure and getting those things would. That's easy. I could do that. That's not a problem. Do all the little side quests because I know towards the end I realized that different personas had different su side quests and they did not appear on the map for the other persona, which I think is a problem. They should have shown that, hey, there's a side quest over here with the slave persona. You're in the lady persona, so you need to go change clothes, then come over here. But you wouldn't actually see that icon unless you were the lady persona. Uh, in addition, they should have show sold maps for locating some of the things, like locating the people with the voodoo dolls, locating the, the dudes that carry the jewels, locating all the treasure in certain areas. They didn't have maps for that. They had maps in all the other games. Why did they take it out for this one? I don't know. It's a minor thing. It's like a two-second thing to program it in there. They already programmed it in on the world map to show where they are, because when you walk by it, it appears. Why they can't just make that a purchasable item like they did in the other titles, I don't know. Anyway, enough of this negative rambling. Thank you guys for watching. Keep watching the rest of this Euro Truck video if it's not done yet, which I highly doubt that it is. And um, we'll go from here. My next... My next games that I'm going to play are going to be Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, and I've got all of the DLC that contains single-player or mission objective type stuff. I didn't get any of the DLC that was exclusively weapon uh, purchases or armor purchases or things like that. None of that stuff. Or, like, I think there were a couple that were like, buy this and you get, like, ten different colored sails for your boat. I didn't get that, because to me that's not important. Uh, but everything that's going to have story or connection or anything like that, I bought all those DLCs, so I've got all that. Uh, and I'll probably end up playing, whether I've started it by the time this video comes out or not, I'll probably end up playing uh, Mirror's Edge for my secondary game. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you all next time.